Good evening. My name is Pastor Gary Ulrich, the pastor of CARE at American Lutheran Church. And I want to welcome each and every one of you to our Good Friday message. I am happy and thankful you are here, in spirit and in love to be together just for a time, to belong together as one body as we listen to the word of God. Please join together again as we are together for the Easter celebration on Sunday morning on the ALC Sun City website. May God bless you all. Yes, Good Friday. And what I have titled this is the yes, the one and only Good Friday. So precious in our minds. Good Friday, always, the Friday before Easter by which the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is told, a holy day that begins the celebration of one of the most momentous weekends in the history of the world, all leading up to the Easter celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Good Friday, a day of telling the story of the agony of Jesus in his suffering and death a time of prayer, a time of contemplation, of meditation, many things focusing and many times focusing on the last seven words of Jesus before he died. And Good Friday, a day referred to by some as Black or Dark Friday, intensely focusing upon and trying to rekindle the suffering of Jesus, torturing themselves in public display in sacrificial ways, suffering in penitence, obedience, our deep sorrow. Is Good Friday a day of sorrow or a day of true proclamation? Oh yes, we fuss with this struggle. It may be a day of sorrow in light of the drama and the story and also a celebration of inward joy and inward peace. I'd like to bring to you this evening a, a Good Friday as a proclamation that Jesus Christ's suffering and death finishes his redemptive work. The blood of Christ is the ransom price of our deliverance, our rescue price that set us free from sin, death, and the power of the devil and personally ushers in the work of reconciliation, the harmony, the harmony between us and God. We were alienated, living on our own resources, no hope because of sin. And atonement, the price paid through Jesus Christ's suffering and death that made amends for a wrong done by humankind's disobedience. The sacrificial work of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the one promised by God through the inspired words of the prophets, the one, the one and only, that God, the Father Almighty, sent forth his only Son, is introduced to us by God's self, first, at Jesus' baptism. Remember this? Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the bodily form of a dove and a voice came from heaven saying, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And the heavens broke open again in the transfiguration of Jesus as he stood with Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah the prophet and as they were cloaked in the grace and glory of heaven itself, a voice broke through the heavens. And this voice said, This is my Son, Chosen One. Listen to him. Listen to him. And it's the one that St. Paul proclaims in his letter to the church at Rome. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we therefore have been justified by his blood, much more will be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we are reconciled to God by the death of his son, 
Much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through we have now received, through Jesus Christ, reconciliation with God. This is the same Jesus Christ that St. John, in our gospel lesson of this evening, reports. Listen closely to a disciple that was the eyewitness to the events the first, one and only Good Friday, John was there. He heard Jesus' words. He witnessed all the goings on. He reports with fewer details than any of the other Gospels. But his reporting was moved by God's Spirit, directed and holds him to the task of proclaiming that Jesus of Nazareth was the King of the Jews, their Messiah, that the prophets foretold without suffering a lot of other details the announcement of the witness of Jesus Christ's death that was given to the world is seen through John's writings. And you're going to hear it first right now, firsthand, as I read to you John's words. The gospel this evening, John's words is taken from John, the 19th chapter, And so they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the Place of the Skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the inscription for this place and they, they were a bit horrified and Jesus was crucified near the city and it was within Aramaic and Latin and in Greek. So they ran to Pilate and, and, and the chief priest said, there had been a mistake made. Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. A joy full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is is finished and he bows his head and gave up the spirit this is the holy gospel's report of our lord this is a very interesting report and it shows a purpose as St. John writes a little later in his gospel in the 20th chapter, these things have been written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that some type of thing to have celebration with? John reports information of beauty and importance. When Pilate said, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest says, we have no king but Caesar. 
So listen closely. He delivered him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, bearing his own cross, to a place, the place of the skull, which is called Golgotha. We see that Pilate delivered Jesus to the Jews to be crucified. Crucifixion was a Jewish act. Although the crucifixion was carried out by the Roman soldiers under Pilate's command, because only the governor could have the authority to implement capital punishment, oh, there was no charge either, or false charge against Jesus. Pilate told the high priest at his trial, he says, I find no fault with the man. You take him out and crucify him. The Gospel of St. Mark reports that Pilate even washed his hands as if to say, that's not my issue, uh, that's not my issue, take him and be done with it. That is yours. So the soldiers threw some clothes on Jesus, took off Jesus' purple cloak, and to be noted, nothing is said that they removed the crown of thorns. Maybe it was left on for the completion of the mockery that he is king. Jesus was led away without delay. The general practice was that the condemned man or the condemned woman was to carry their own cross generally through the most populated streets of the city. Jews wanted a hasty execution because of their late, because of their hate and the lateness of the day. Usually a cross was set in the ground before the condemned was placed on the cross. Jesus was placed on the cross with a sign above his head so that all could see his feet were about three foot from the ground. The condemned were usually put on a seat on the cross, then tied and then nailed onto the crossbars. The agony of the crucifixion was the hot sun, the pain, the raging thirst, the slow death, which usually took three to four days. Someone noticed the sign above Jesus, read, Jesus Nazareth, King of the Jews, and ran back to Pilate and wanted a change to the man said, I am King of the Jews, but Pilate waved him off. I have written what I have written. Oh. What a worldwide publicity sign by giving out the inscription in three languages, in Hebrew, in Latin, the official language, and in Greek. That shouts out to the world, the world as they know it, and proclaims the innocence of Jesus to the world, to the worldwide. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, also, the tunic, which was seamless, so they cast lots. Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who shall it, who shall it be. This was done to fulfill scripture. He looked to his mother and John. In the midst of his enemies, in the pain and agony, in a son's care for his mother, knowing a mother's love, knowing a mother's love is so strong, and beseeching. He comforts her. Behold your son, he says to his mother. Behold your mother, he says to John. No hesitation. John and Mary, at that hour, a blessed union. Jesus, still Mary's son, but now also her Lord and Savior. And then Jesus simply asked for a drink. More than three hours passed after he had talked to Mary and John. Three hours of bitter agony where God turned his face from him. And after he talked to them <laughs> during this time, the darkness covered the land. And all this was accomplished and foretold in scriptures concerning the early work of Jesus. All was fulfilled. And he said, I thirst. The cry of Jesus' lips for moisture, a physical cry to seal, to proclaim from all the world to see, to hear, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Other gospels say that Jesus said, I commend my spirit to the hands of the Father. 
Yes, Jesus speaks words to the Father. He makes his report. Scripture assigns that the death of Jesus was totally due to the physical effects of his suffering and crucifixion. When his spirit left his body, Jesus died. And we can be assured that actual death as the spirit left was the peace and joy as he rested in his father's hands and this is in heaven. Our soul passes to be with Jesus in heaven. The eternal abode of God, the saints, and all the angels join about. All should hear this, every one of us here, every one of us listening, that the whole passion and the death of Jesus was intended for us. Oh, great God in heaven, pray, praise, and give thanks. The work of redemption, reconciliation, and atonement has come to closure, has come to pass. And when Jesus died, his human soul or spirit was separated from his body, just as this separation takes place in our death. And the death of Jesus took place entirely in his human nature and in no way affected the unity of the Logos, The word made flesh, as John talked about in his first chapter. It only had to do with the human nature. Nothing, nothing destroyed the sinless person of Jesus. That spirit ruled absolutely. All done for us. All done for us to bring us into the fold of the community of love all done for us to bring us into God's kingdom, all done for us to now come to our Lord as the shepherd, the caretaker, or wherever we do when we talk to him and walk with him, because he tells us we are his own. I would like to ask now if you would pray with me as part of this message. O Holy Lord, because of your great love for us, you will to be crucified and to suffer and shed your precious blood for our redemption and for our salvation. Look to us now, dear Lord, as we gather far and wide on remembering your passion and death. We give praise to you and tremble with joy and wonder at your mighty works, your great love for us. We give you thanks for the wondrous blessings you rain down upon us each and every day as your children. Your presence in our daily living is the care, the protection, and the safety of our lives. You rescue us from known and unknown. All perils of life fall before you. Lord, as we talk this evening, as we, as we talk to you, as we pray to you, we ask that you deliver us, deliver us from evil. And this coronavirus, coronavirus that has, has clouded our world, give us peace. Give us faith to come to you for strength. Give us patience and wisdom and give us might, holy, holy Lord. Show your presence to us, O oh Lord, to sustain us in love and holy faithfulness as we know and believe that we are never alone. You are with us. We pray in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pause here and say what a celebration we just had. What a beauty that God gave us his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and should be cared for as the shepherd cared for his sheep in this world. We can come to him. We can come to him in forgiveness and absolution. We know we are reconciled to us. He will care for us. And therefore, I give a benediction, but that's like a blessing to pass us on our way as we joy and ready ourselves for the Easter celebration.
that is going to come about in just three days. I say, may the Lord bless you and keep you, surround you in his holy presence. May the Lord shine his face upon you each and every waking moment and cover you with comfort and care and protection each moment of the night. May the Holy Spirit fill you with a full measure of love, of joy and of peace, the peace of God's love for you that is beyond our understanding. May this peace be shared among you. For this peace, this peace will make you whole. Depart now in this holy peace. You are his own. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. Peace be with you.